Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Maida from Vala Inc. in Katy, Texas and today I'll be going over the best practice for installation of our KBH enclosed conductor bar. First off, you're going to want to go ahead and get some tools together for this installation. The first set of first tool is going to be two box wrenches. You can either go half inch or 13 millimeter. You can get a half inch wrench with a ratchet on the end or you can get a ratchet with a socket, whichever you prefer. Uh, Sometimes there may be limitations on how far the tool can move. A sharpie to mark on the, to mark links, square, and a tape measure. So today we're going to be using our EHK, EHK brackets that mount to the bottom side of the flange, but they, they can also go on the top side of the flange, as you see here. These EHK brackets can come in different lengths, uh, different metals, stainless, or galvanized. These three are already fixed and secured and mounted with our sliding hangers. Our sliding hangers are very similar to our, to our fixed point hangers, except for a couple brackets, a couple pieces of metal. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But right now, we're going to go ahead and start by dismounting up our bracket with our with our rail and then our two clamps for right here. I've already prematurely marked it so that it's even with the rest of these as far as how, how far it's going to come out. So I've marked that and equally to all of them so they're all at the same distance out. And I've cheated. I've also marked on the beam where I would like for it to go. A good practice to have. If you're going to pull the, the the railing this way, you want to hold this side. If you're going to push it back the other way, you're going to want to hold that clamp on that side. So that way it doesn't fall off and drop about 20 or 30 feet or maybe hurt somebody below you. So that's a big thing to make sure it doesn't fall off. Alright. So you want to push the bolt all the way to the beam. And then Go ahead and snug it up, not too much, just enough to, to make sure it's not going to fall off. Line it up. Then you're going to take your square. Put it on the beam. Look below. Make sure it's square. You could uh, take your half inch socket. Just snug up the front. Look, check it again. That back side move it over just a bit. Hook your head on this side of the beam. I know it's a lot easier without a hard hat, but we're in the office today. Check your square. The square is good. So that way I know it's like it's aimed like this, and as you're going, you won't see the bar the bar will be have a nice clean straight finish once you get done. So now, I'm going to keep my square up there and tighten it down. Alright, perfect. Next, I'm going to move on to putting this, this plate So we're going to take this, and if you see, you have one, two, three different mounting holes for these hangers. This one right here that's threaded is going to be used with this bolt, which is also a 13 millimeter head or half inch, whatever you prefer, and what tools you carry. So we're going to go ahead and thread this in a little bit, make sure it goes all the way down, make sure we don't have to worry about it being up and stripping out the thread. So we're going to go ahead and snug it up, just run it in about three or four turns, and then we're going to back it out. So, we're going to take the washers and pull them up. We're going to put this bolt right here. And we'll get you a, a closer up view of what it looks like once, you get it, once we get it on. Take the soft wrench. We're just going to snug it up so it makes it a little bit easier, but we're going to still make it to work. It can move back and forth if we need to. All right. Next, 
we're going to take our fixed point hanger. We're going to go ahead and take off this top nut, take off the crush washer and the flat washer. Go ahead and put it. Go ahead and put it up in here. Put our flat washer on first, crush washer, and net. So on this, we're going to go ahead and push this all this flat washer that's on this hanger all the way against here and go ahead and tighten down this, this bolt. Keep from moving back and forth. And now we got all of our hangers aligned. The next move is going to go ahead and be to install one of our KVH. You can start with either one of them, it doesn't matter. And what you're going to do is you're just going to put the bar in between them, both sides, push up, and it's going to lock down. It's got these little hooks that are going to go into the grooves of the KBH on each side. And you want to make sure to pop your heads on both sides. Okay? Make sure that they're both in there before you prematurely let go. Awesome. Those are in there now. Now, we're going to move over here to our second bar. And you can also still slide it down there, especially when you got two people in the four meter long ones. You can still move these on these sliding hangers, hence sliding hanger. All right, so we got our spring joints on this one. So we're going to flip this around to this edge. And you'll see on our, on our bars that we have these little tabs that prevent it from going in back into the housing. Okay, you always want to mount it with with the springs on this one that doesn't have these little ears and so that way the copper doesn't get pushed back into the housing. So we're going to put a little bit of distance, we're going to try to get as close as we can to these spring joints but not too close. Now we've confirmed all four are in there. Okay. Uh, one thing I forgot to say is on these brackets, the spacing. You want to have them, it's two meters for indoor spacing, or if the system's outdoors, it's 1.3 meters, which translates to six and a half feet or 4.4 feet. Now, we're going to go ahead and bring this together and then we're going to finish off. Uh, finishing our fixed point hanger. So on these spring joints, you want to get them all kind of the tips in there. Get the tips in there and tips in there, all in there. And you're going to take the housing to the right and pull it to the one to the left. You want to go ahead and inspect all the joints. And the best practice, I would say, is to grab your cell phone. I know you got those hard hats on. Uh, you can't really get on the other side. I'm shorter. I got, I got to get on my tippy toes on the side of the boom to get and see. But the best thing I would say to do is take your phone, reverse the camera, go in there and look at it. So that way I can see the back side of these. And if you really want to protect yourself and to verify down the road, go ahead and take that picture and you can upload those or you can send them to your to your supervisor. That way you have every joint to know that those are properly put together. So those are all good now. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my fixed point. It's all together, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my fixed point. You take these two, piece of metal. And put one facing that way, and this other one facing this way. So they have these teeth on the end of them. 
So one flop should be on one side of the fixed point hanger and the other one should be on the other side of the fixed point hanger. These tabs are going to hang off on opposite sides of each other. It's going to go underneath the nut above the, the other the smash plate. And then you're going to take your two box wrenches. Okay. You're going to hold this one up top that's underneath and then you're going to twist this one to the right and the bottom one to the right. So next, next, now the fixed point hanger is installed, we're going to go ahead and install our joint cover. These joint covers, all you need is a pair of either nice volley pliers or you can go ahead and get some needle nose pliers and go ahead and on each side you will have these little clips that you press down and then with a little bit of pressure separating it, a little bit of pressure, they'll pull it apart. Whenever they come to you, they are to be separated. And so let me go ahead and get this separated and show you the difference between this and an end cap. Now that they got the joint cover separated, let me show you the difference between these two these two caps. So this one, as you see, has these, these pieces of plastic that stick out. I don't know if you can see that, but that's where your ceiling strip will go, and that, that holds, this is where your ceiling strip will go, and then that way, also, whenever your collector's going through, it runs on top of that at the joint. An end cover will not have anything on it. So that if you end up installing this, this end cover on a joint, it's not going to have this and could potentially allow the collector to drop down and create premature wear on the brushes or even damage it. Okay, so I'm going to set that end cover down. Now I'm going to take one side of this cover, I'm going to start on the back side, and this, this lip right here, this lip right here, this, this right angle, is going to fit on the bottom right here on the other side. So you want to do it to where, it, here's the bar, and it closes like that, the clamshell. And confirm that it's on each side. All right. Close it down. Grab my other side, confirm that that's on there, and do the same thing. I'm going to look underneath and make sure it's going to fit on the back side of there. Take it, and then squish it together. Voila. On the end cap, it's got this end piece that slides in where the ceiling strip will be. I'm going to come down here. And it's going to slide through the ceiling strip inserts. And then on this one, there's a little slot right here that's going to go right here on the edge of this. So put that side on. And then just like that joint cover, it's going to clamshell together. Double check it. Voila. Next, we're going to go ahead and show you how to put our collectors in there. Now that the bar is on there, the fixed points on there, the brackets are secured, joint covers, end cap, we're going to take our, our collector. These collectors also come with one meter all the way to five meter cables, depending on how far you need to reach. But we'll pull this collector down, down the KVH line will be our toe arm and I'll show you how that works in just a moment. For now though, we're going to go ahead and show you that on here there's this little this little tip right here and it can only go one way into our KBH bar. And so we suggest you put them in there and then do a trial run by hand and I'll show you how that goes. So the, we're going to identify where that notch is. It's going to be on this side in which it's usually on the opposite, it's on the upper side of the opposite side of the, the ground. So we see the ground is identified in green and yellow on the other side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this cable first of all. The first two that go in there 
I'm going to squeeze these brushes together. So that way it can clear it can clear and go in there. So let me show you. I'm going to take these, put the wheels in there, put that first two in there. And you see, it's not going to let you go in there unless you squeeze in the brushes. So you squeeze in both sides, both brushes, and put it in there. And then to test it, you want to grab it by hand and walk it down. Walk it through these joints. Make sure it's going in there nice and smooth. Shouldn't be any hiccup. Shouldn't be too hard to pull. It should not be fighting this. You will know if you put it in wrong because of because of that groove that's at the top. So if, if it goes in this way, which it will if you force it, it will go in there. And I don't want to do it because I don't want to damage our product. But it will it can be shoved in there, and then it'll be very hard to pull. Very hard to pull. And which you don't want. You want it to be nice and smooth. You want these collectors to last for as long as they can. And walk it back and forth. Just take that extra time to do a quality check to make sure it's going to run smooth for you. All right. And so after that, you're going to go ahead and on your crane side or your mobile side, your vehicle side, you're going to want to attach this tow arm. These tow arms also come in galvanized and stainless too. The great thing about these tow arms is even if your beam is walking a little bit or side to side or up and down this has the clearance to go back and forth we know as old buildings get older they start to settle and this is going to prevent any any harm or any kind of weird angles from going on and also it pivots here so that way you have it you have two different it can go up and down and it doesn't have to be so rigid so this toe arm is going to be fixed to the crane and it's going to pull this collector down Same way the other way. We do offer double collector solutions if that's what you like. Um, just give us a call. We can go ahead and get you taken care of. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, Stephen, or any of the Volley team members here. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you.